Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Prophecy Cup League with Tejo and Royal. Today we have a three-game series between Team Fub and Larion Gaming. Royal, how are you doing today, my man? I'm doing great. I'm ready. I'm buckled in for a great three-game series. Now, usually, uh, rundown of the teams first off. We got Team Fub, 2-2, two two, currently 4th, versus Illyrion Gaming, uh, currently 1-2 and two in 7th place. Now, usually, I'd say this is... Um, this is settled within the first 15 minutes because fourth versus seventh. But this is still early in the season. Uh, the positions haven't been locked in yet, and it's anybody's game. So first off, we got the Aurelia ban, strangely enough, uh, followed by two ADC bans by Team Fub, three ADC bans, uh, and Xin Zhao ban and Silas ban. What do you make of that? Uh, that just generally goes to show that uh, they've got a firm grasp of the meta. Silas is pretty well. Silas and Irelia are pretty strong menaces in the top lane, right? Uh, they just run right through anything that uh, comes along. Caitlyn, Twitch, and Sivir are all heavy meta picks right now. Especially crit, with the crit changes that came yeah, in. Yeah, crit changes just completely wreck any ADC that's not them. And with a first pick Ezreal, it just goes to show that the Caitlyn was most likely going to just destroy his early game and make it hard from the farm. So that was probably why they were targeting out the ADC picks. That or they're trying to, you know, keep um, Artificer down, keep him from getting uh, his comfort picks. Right. Um, another thing is that Urgot, uh, I Ergot is an extremely meta pick right now. Uh, the fact that he can build tank and still deal a lot of damage means that uh, he's just a confidence pick that right. you can pick any, any time into any matchup and he'll still do decently. Right. And we have an Ivern pick. Ivern hasn't been seen in the meta in so long. It's almost like a niche pickup at this point. And with the what Rengar encounter... He's the jungle. Yeah, he's the jungle, but... He He's hasn't been game. in the jungle in a long time. And with the Rengar counter matchup, this will actually make the dynamic between the two very interesting because remember, Rengar has that passive where if he sees a bush, he's most likely going to be hopping out of it. Velka's pick that could be flexed either mid or support. Same, right, right. same goes for the Urga. It can be flexed mid or top. Right, right. Um, a Vladimir pick for mid. What do you make of that? Is that mid or top? That's most likely going to be uh, top. Vladimir doesn't really like mid lane from what some of my close friends like to say. Uh, and plus, you know, we just see the Oriana pick up falling right afterwards as a counter to the Anivia. But Vladimir into Urgot is actually going to be a very, very interesting matchup. Urgot has a lot of damage, but Vladimir can negate it with his W. The only thing is if Urgot gets off his ultimate onto Vladimir, even if he pulls, he still will get pulled into it. I didn't know about that interaction. Yes, Ooh, yes, it's still pick. a tether. Yes, Urgot's ult is still a tether, and Jin's, I mean, Vladimir's pull does not negate tethers. So as long as he has the tether on him, now if he pulls before the tether lands, then it, he's just fine. But if he allows the ult to land on him and he tries to pull it actually will make it a lot easier for Urgot to kill him anyways let's take a look at the uh, basic strategies that these guys are going for so Illyrian Gaming is going for uh, a mid game carry with uh, with Jin and then they can, they're can they going to be able to like convert that later on into a Velkaz carry or a Velkaz and Anivia carry because the Velkaz and Anivia have a really great late game right but the problem is, Anivia is more for stalling out the game, allowing that Velkaz to come online for team fights. The problem I see for Alarion Gaming's team fight phase is Urgot is their only true frontline. Ivern is more of a supportive, you know, jungler. So he's not really going to be able to sit there and face tank that much damage coming out of this FUB gaming team comp. Anivia is going to have to set up very good walls to keep those, that Rengar and that. Uh, Vladimir from getting to that Jin because Jin is going to be the primary damage source coming into these late game team fights if they decide to go 5v5. Uh, usually, 
I'd say that Rengar can get to the back line, but the, the Team Fub's team comp is actually really smart in that they have two threats. Uh, they have they have the Vladimir threat coming from from the front line, and then ooh, we're and we're in the game. Right, and we here we are in the game one. Team Fub versus Team Alarion Gaming. Two two versus one two. Hopefully. These two teams can bring us a very, very beautiful game. It looks like a five man games. going in. A little bit of an invasion. Getting a little bit of vision. Get that 10 gold on Ezreal. Not right, bad. Right. Not bad yeah. at all. And that's definitely something that you want to see coming out of teams, you know, early game. Just establishing that vision, especially with an Ivor in jungle. You want to make sure that you keep tabs on him. Because he actually has a very, very healthy clear with his passive. And there's my computer saying that the game has started despite this. Uh, yeah, my computer is not the best, so I do apologize. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. And here we are coming into the lines of scrimmage. And just a reminder that refillable potion does consume a charge to restore 20, 125 health over 12 seconds. <laughs> just in case you forgot. Uh, right, right. On top of that, when you back... Uh, it'll refill those charges. And we have a small trade going on in the bottom blue side, Tribush. Looks like Ezreal might go for that fourth hit onto Jin, but he misses it just slightly. And another okay, trade coming up on the top side. Uh, Urgot taking a little bit of poke damage. Right, Let's get right. Back off that half health. He's got potion, so he's fine. And in the bot lane, a lot of. What's, what's gonna happen is Urgot, or sorry, Jin and Velkaz are just gonna po try and poke him out. There's not much that Ezreal and Braum can do in the way of that, unless they overextend. In that case, they just go in, uh, get the stun, and back off if it's not a kill. Right, and that's just a, a thing that makes Ezreal such a prized pick right now in the meta. Ezreal is super safe. So even if, you know, he gets poked out, all he has to do is just sit back for a little bit, land some cues to, you know, proc off his Kleptomancy, and generally just try to stay as healthy as possible in this lane. Because he's not going to be able to... Oh! And we have a bit of a trade here. Ivern kind of caught in Team Fub's jungle. He's going to have to flash out to get away, but our Oriana might be able to land this. Is she going to use flash? Oriana going to the chill, chasing, snare. Ooh. And having to use cleanse to get out, with low bag having to pop his passive a bit of a extended trade between these two teams with bot lane also coming up from the uh bot lane and another fight these teams are just going at it first blood to team fub ivern down that's gonna be a huge hit especially in the early game uh ivern usually wants to just farm up but he won't be able to do this now that he is uh, dead <laughs> That's an unfortunate side effect of dying as the jungler. Rengar is going to go ahead and collect himself a bit more gold in that top side jungle, giving Team Fub an even bigger lead over Alarion Gaming. So Rengar's a hunter, right? You know what he loves? Squishy enemy junglers. He loves that. He loves going into those bushes and just messing them up, messing with their heads and destroying them. Remove effectively removing a champion from the game. That is what Rengar does, and you'll see this throughout the game. Right, and that's just the uh, downside of having a more supportive jungler over a more you know active jungler. But we could see Murdoch kind of make up for this for going for more ganks, like he tried to do on that top side. Unfortunately, he was a bit too low on the helm. Oh, and a nice Q landed by Murdoch to go ahead and. Locked down that Oriana too bad. Log bag had to back away. Poke going onto the Brom and Brom's going. Brom's taking a bit of damage. Fourth shot ready. And, and Jin that... takes the kill. And that was just a beautiful trade by uh, Alerion Gaming, knowing for a fact that there's just not much that Team Fub's bot lane can really do to match. So they just continuously stack on the poke until they can go in for the kill. Yeah, I can tell you as an Ezreal man, uh, Ezreal doesn't do much damage early on. I mean, yeah, he but, bit, he, he but he is capable of trading. Unfortunately for 
team fub it there. Is. Bot lane is just way too short of a range to deal with that. Yeah, but Ezreal really likes having that Sheen just for the extra damage. Uh, it's roughly a hundred extra, or like it doubles your damage, your Q damage. I think my math might be a little wrong. I am sober after all, so. Right. It's uh, it's not necessarily doubles. It actually just adds a bit more damage on top based off of his current base attack damage, not necessarily scaling. So but it's... nonetheless, nonetheless, it still deals more damage than buying a pickaxe for Ezreal, uh, which you buy for the um, the mana mute or right. Mura mana. Sorry, I don't, I forget which one is which. Right. Um. Ooh, a little bit of poke damage for me out of on Ezreal. And a gank, gank coming in by Ur Murdoch. This is what I was talking about. Murdoch making use of the fact that he's a more supportive jungler to get his team auto. further ahead. And the flash oh. auto takes the kill onto Braum. Braum 2 0. Or 0 and 2. And Jin with the 2 0, 450 gold bounty. Right. Jin already with a BF sword. Uh, I think that this Jin is most likely going to get incredibly fed by mid game uh if he can lock down his ie before 15 minutes these team fights around dragon are going to be super explosive pun intended oh and we have another trade coming around the mid lane oriana with the beautiful shockwave almost locking down murdoch for that kill. <sighs> murdoch just barely escaping with his life there uh luckily there was a little plant so he's gonna feast on that Oh, Diomar wasting the ult. Oh, and the flash. Well played by Diomar to get out of that sticky situation. Unfortunately, that also means that his flash is down. So that could possibly lead to a rather horrible situation Better later on. The flash than to lose the life. That's what I always say. Right, right. Uh, anyways, top lane. Got a decent CS lead versus, uh, versus AG. Right. Uh, other than that, nothing is really going on up there. Right. So Except let's uh, let's let's. Oh, and Jin with the ult. Is he going to land any of those shots? Unfortunately, I don't know what that was. I think he accidentally pressed it. He might uh, he might be a little tipsy at the wheel. That's fine. Unlikely. He was most likely going for that Ezreal. Ezreal was low enough to, if he had landed at least two of those shots, he would have most likely executed with the fourth one. But due to missing all four, you know, that plan kind of goes by the wayside. Uh, sad when you miss all your all your shots. Right, right. And so right now we see uh, Illyrion kind of setting up for the dragon play. So... What I... I, I feel like they're most likely going to go for it within the next two minutes of the game. Unless, unless, Gas can somehow lock down this bot lane and sort of slow the momentum that they have going right now because Jin is just running rampant at this point. Rengar, I don't think he can help at all before he has his ultimate. Once he has his ultimate, that bot lane is easy picking. They don't have much mobility, much in Ooh, and a crazy combination done by Alarion Gaming. Jin is most likely dead in this situation, and that's a trade back by Alarion Gaming. And right there, it's you see that Rengar ulti in play coming into co coming into um, fruition. Right, like, right. Rengar's job is to destroy one single champion, and maybe he'll get some others, but. For the most part, he's going to assassinate, and he just did that. So, Rhaegar's looking very good right now. <laughs> looking looking pretty, I... pretty happy cat. Right, right. Murder Cat is definitely happy with some teeth on his bone tooth. And we have a small trade going up here in topside. These two are definitely going at it. It feels like Urgot's going to try to weather the storm so much of Vlad's poke and get oh, crap, as yeah. much damage done. Yep. Oh, and a nice combination done by Larian Gaming. They're going to lock down this Oriana for another kill onto Ivern. Oh, for his first kill, actually. My bad. Even then, e even with um, like all the CC. What, what am I trying to say? Basically, they have so much CC on the side of uh, on the side of AG Illyrion, that they they have they can be able to uh, 
They they are able to lock down kills very easily. Right. Sorry about that. It's all right. It's all right. A bit of a Go ahead and gather your thoughts. I understand that you're a little a little tired. You've just woken up. And Alerion Gaming goes ahead and locks down that dragon just as I predicted. Uh, so we're coming into mid game, right? And I want to say the team fub is not necessarily too far behind. It's actually relatively equal in gold, right? Team Alerion Gaming has only gotten a 0.3 K gold. It's not necessarily the end of the world. Oh, and the ultimate by Urgot. Is he going to lock it in? And he is for his nom, first nom, kill nom, of the nom, game. Nom, nom, nom. And bot lane with the trade. Oh, and the kill back onto the Velkaz. Unfortunately, he used the ult a little too close to Braum, and Braum was able to interrupt his ult with his own. A one for one trade. It's not bad. I'd say it's a little bit more in the uh, in the favor of Urgot, obviously. He's three. I think he's three and oh. Uh, no, Ur that was actually Urgot's first kill. Oh. Sorry, my uh, screen is a little blurred. Anyways, yeah, Urgot gets a nice advantage onto himself, and he's able to further bully this poor Vladimir. I thought Vladimir was a counter pick. Uh, he's not so much a counter pick as he is someone who can sort of match the poke and or bully Urgot if he stays relatively safe. Well, it's unfortunate that it's turning out this way. Poor Vladimir will be able to do much with come, uh, come late game. Right. And as we see the vision starting to set up, it looks like Fub may try to go for this rift. Oh, and Gasp is caught, I mean, is caught outside. He might get locked down here for the kill, and he's going to just walk it right on out. Well played by uh, Werpak to sort of keep his jungler safe in the weathering storm of Anivia and Ivern. A scary combination, if I say so myself. What Fug needs to do right now is use the Rengar. Oh, and a nice little trade going on. Oh, and though Ur Urgot ult slightly misses just to the left. Diomar may be able to lock down this Ivern, and he does for a nice kill traded onto him. Urgot's going to have to apprehend a way to sort of get himself to safety. Not a bad trade at all. Getting you some blood onto Ivern means that he can get some items onto himself, you know, get a little more tanky, that way he doesn't die so easily to the Rengar, build his support items, and further buff the already fed Jin. Uh, Jin's already got his Infinity Edge, so he's looking pretty spiffy. Uh, that fourth shot is gonna hit for a lot of damage, uh, securing more kills, which will buy him more items, which will give him more damage, and eventually, Jin will be so far ahead, hopefully, that the other team won't be able to do anything. Uh, and that's generally the goal of Jin, is to go ahead and get at least his first three items. He's going to want to get that, uh, that rapid fire cannon, and then he's most likely going to either build into the static shiv or into the storm razor, depending on how they want to play this out. They may have enough CC on the team of uh, Alarion to, to where they might not need the Storm Razor for the slow. But if Jin wants to chase down kills himself, then the, I could definitely see him building into that Storm Razor instead of the Shiv third. So here's here's the thing about Jin's spike. I, now I play in silver, so my, my opinion may not matter. But uh, I found that if Jin gets a lead early on, it's very hard to take it back from him. Uh, Jin, Jin is one of those champions who usually, under good circumstances, will take a lead and keep the lead. Um, and while that's usually what you want with most champions, oh, a little bit of a team fight breaking out here. And uh, the curtain call goes wide, just slightly, almost getting that kill down. Uh, as I was saying, um, but that's usually what you while well, that's usually what you want to do um jin has that extra i guess perk 
And the disdain him. down onto Vladimir, he's gonna have to pull out immediately. Will the fear beyond death go down onto the... Oh, and he uses it just a little too late. Vladimir might actually lock down this kill and he's... No, he's gonna let himself walk, let that Urgot walk right Rengar away. Rengar coming in for the, for the kill? And he pops the old murder cat's gonna go murder and he's gonna lock down that Urgot for 300. Meow. <laughs> and Ivern makes Ezreal burn the flash. I, Ezreal's most likely gonna make it out of here. I, I don't see Ivern collecting any kills today. But that is a flash down on Ezreal. Most likely he's going to be a little hurting in the near future. But Alarion Gaming goes ahead and claims that first tower gold. And even with first tower, I want to posit you the fact that Fub is actually taking the gold lead. Done. 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 <laughs> oh, and Urgot's coming up on Vladimir. Vladimir's going to have to pull himself away. Oh, and the Q lands. And that's going to be Vladimir going bye bye. However, that's not going to make up for the fact that he lost the turret. But, you know, a kill is nice. Nice. It's good stuff. That's what you want. I forget who got the first turret gold. It was... It was Fug, right? Uh, yes. I do believe that, uh... Fug... Or no, it, it was... It was AG, I think. Was it Fug or AG? I don't know. Anyways. Anyways, um... <laughs> I was saying... I was saying a tangent, and then I forgot it. It was actually, yes, it was AG with the first tower going into a uh, FUB, go ahead and claim that one. Okay. And a Thank small you. fight here, over here by Rift Herald, FUB goes ahead and claims that, and they're just gonna skedaddle right out of that curtain call, no, no harm, no foul. That Braum shield is really good into Jin. Uh, it stops a lot of his, like, projectiles. You can even block the fourth shot with reduced damage. If you if you time your shield right, you can just negate it entirely. Um, I, I'm glad that they picked it into Jin, because that 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 really hurts him, especially right. with the the Belkaz too. While you can't block the ulti, you can block his abilities, some of them at least. The Q, Ooh, mostly. this damage is going to hurt Vladimir most definitely, but he's going to have to turn around because Urgot's chance to fight is really limited by his Q, his W cooldown. And a four-man top gank takes out Braum. Sadly, he is no longer with us. us. He's no longer with us. Mustache Ooh. Daddy is down. Oh, and this is gonna be Vladimir going bye-bye yet again. Urgot, you have nowhere to run. Murder Cat's gonna claim you forget another kill. So what Fug is doing right now is they're having the Rengar basically babysit um, the Vlad. Because the Vlad is no longer able to um, 1v1 the Urgot. Uh, he's able to get him low enough to where uh, our little cat can have a little kitty snack. But it's still a one for one trade at the end of the day. Right. And it looks like Rengar's gonna go ahead and claim this bot tower for himself, get himself a nice 150 gold snack. And slowly but surely, Team Fub is, uh, has actually brought themselves into a lead in this game. And it's really coming off the backs of this Rengar. This Rengar and this Orianna have both pressed uh, Ivern and Anivia pretty hard. And that's just showing to Anivia's late game strengths. Anivia is most likely not going to win early game against most champions. So you're not really expecting her to have a lead. What a ward kill. Oh, and a nice cheeky ult by Anivia to say you're gonna take the long way around getting back to that tower. That's what I love about, like, Anivia, and also hated about her, is that she just... She's able to control spaces so well. Oh, and the Orianna ult goes ahead and locks down four members entirely. Anivia just barely getting away from that last Ezreal Q to sort of... Get herself to safety and <laughs> Velkaz with the no you combo says goodbye Vladimir. But 
Fub are going to pick up Jin on the back side of that team fight and trade it one for one. Oh, and he jumps back in. Never mind. Two for one. Well played by Rengar. Unfortunately, Ivern gave him a way back in with the bush that I was mentioning during the loading screen. Rengar. Honestly, I, I didn't think of the, the effect that the bushes would have on Rengar. That, that was a really smart pick. I forget who picked it, uh, what the order was. But picking Rengar against uh, Ivern is definitely a good counter pick. Put that, put that in your uh, solo queue handboats. <laughs> and so, as we come away from that uh, small trade, Team Fub were able to maintain their tower, keeping it away from Alerion Gaming's greedy clutches. And now we just sort of come into the mid game low. Both teams are sort of setting up vision as they can. Uh, Team Fub is slowly but surely trying to choke out Alerion Gaming's every hope and whim, pushing out these side lanes as much as possible. And just clearing vision around this Baron, though Dragon is likely the next focus with a small trade. Sun comes out, misses the Braum, but still hits Ezreal. Ezreal coming Braum in is... the Oh, and Team Fub will go ahead and collect that. Nibia, Oriana, the Nibia Oriana passive is down, the Nibia is dead, Ivern is also dead. Team Fub clean that up with a nice 3-0. No deaths on their side, and it's looking like they're gonna take this mid game very, very easily. Most likely roll it straight into Baron. There's no one on the side of Valerion Gaming that can even hope to match them. Jin may be able to get off a cheeky ult if he pleases, but Velkaz can only poke just so much with his own kit. Oh, and Jin may clean up the Orianna. And that Jin was might be able to clean up this whole lot. But is he gonna go for the kills? No, he's not. He's also going to miss the last shot, unfortunately, because of Vladpool. And there's a flash, a TP coming down from Urgot. Is he going to go for the disdain? He is with the purge. But is he going to be able to land a fear beyond death? But he gets it on Braum, unfortunately. And that looks like it's not going to be a kill. Ooh, and Vladimir is still running for his life, but he will not have it for very much longer. Urgot is overstaying. He's likely going to fall to Ezreal. <laughs> and Ezreal just gets no you yet again by that Velikaz. That Velkov's true damage can really mess up your day. Yes. Especially as an ADC who uh, has a little, a little bit on the short side of health. Well, it's not so much the health as the MR. So, Ezreal's standard build is obviously, you know, uh, Mermana into Iceborne Gauntlet. That leaves very little early game itemization for MR. So, Velkov's is just eating through him like wet tissue paper every time he even so much as shows up on his screen. On top of that, you have the true damage coming out of the ulti, which, uh... While most champions have a natural MR, which doesn't... honestly doesn't do much. Oh, and a trade coming down on the bot side. Rengar getting a little small trade. Oh my god, and he just eats Ivern for breakfast barely escaping that, also making Orianna whiff the ult, she almost had it on him. Jin's already doing 1000 damage with his voice shot. It's uh... I wonder if Jin can be able to come back uh, from the gold deficit. Right. Right now it looks like 40k to 53k, am I, am I reading that right? Uh, yes, but right now, actually, Jin has a gold lead on Ezreal, and down goes Ivern, but it looks like they're going to take a Rengar with a nice 1,000 gold bounty in return. Into the Shredder he goes. The cat played with the wrong string, and then he got pulled in. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And it looks like Alerion's not going to go down without a fight. They're not going to let Team Fub just walk right all over them. But it looks like they're going to have to play it a bit slower right now. There's not that much vision on Alerion 
gaming side that can really stop the Rengar if he decides to go for one of these lane flanks. They are just now getting out some wards, you know, just to cover their flanks, but Rengar is dead, so they're not really doing much for them. But with the Dragon coming up in a minute, and Team Fub already having the Scuttle, that means that Scuttle's gonna be down by the time Dragon spawns. So whichever team so much as gets sort of a, you know, positional lead advantage. in the, yeah, advantage in that area of the map, they're most likely gonna be able to collect that Dragon very easily. And what Dragon is next, I wonder? Is Info? Yes, it is, so... Ooh. If Alarion gets that, that's actually two Infernals on their side. Fub definitely wants that with a Rengar on their team because of his passive giving him, you know, incremental increases to his damage just by getting, you know, various kills. What is it, so Max? 25%? Uh, Ooh. yes. Oh, and Prom Prom gets caught out and just destroyed by the amount of damage on Alar Alarion's gaming. Well, right, and that's, and that's just the pick potential of their team comp. They have Velkaz, Anivia, Urgot, Ivern, Jin. Everyone on that team can just pick off a certain person and just make oh, all. And, and a beautiful assist by Velkaz to make sure that his buddy Urgot can clean up that kill. With Fear Beyond Death landing on Orianna, that's and two people down that's going to be dragon most likely to their side unless rengar makes the hell mary play to go ahead and collect that dragon away from them. two infernals rengar's going stealth but he gets hit by the q and Urgot's being forward. a big boy making rengar use up that ultimate so that way he can't get that dragon but he will take Urgot as a consolation prize unfortunate trade for team Fug. Uh, as Braum comes back and he gets the the Knight's Vow onto Ezreal, which is nice. It's, it's nice, little, but it's a uh, it's it's a little late. I won't lie. Hey, it's never it's never too late to get items that ensure your carries stay alive. Right, right. Although Definitely I would prefer that my support that. build it earlier. That way I can <laughs> stop dying. <laughs> Man, and here we go. Though. Here we go. A little bit of a scouting incursion into the enemy base. They're going to be start prepping for Baron. Uh, getting vision into that enemy jungle definitely helps them with that endeavor. Uh, oh, and Murder Cat just deletes Jin off the face. Of Murder the Cat strikes again. That's definitely going to most be a Baron play then. With Jin down for 40 seconds and Baron up in 10, uh, unless Velkaz no use this Rengar. Oh, they, yep, they're gonna try to no you him. Oh, almost. Rengar is gonna be able to just walk away, heal up a little bit off of Baron, most likely, and keep them from doing much. But that's actually Velkaz ult down, so that's gonna be a, one less tool that they're gonna have to actually steal this Baron away. And as they set up for this Baron play, Velkaz with Alarion a nice goes. combo. Alarion saying, no, you're not allowed to get this Baron without a fight. Skill shots trading on both sides. And Oriana with the beautiful R to go Absolutely ahead and destroy. down Velkaz. Fub Gaming just running them down at this point. There's nothing that they can do. Jin is back up with the curtain call, trying his hardest to bring it back for his team. Ivern's gonna try to keep Anivia in the game just for a little bit longer. The passive going down to keep her in. That's enough to keep him off Baron. So I and, consider that a winning play. Oh, Ezreal's gonna go down here. There's not much that Braum can do for his AD carry as Jin runs him down. There. Oh, and Ur got TP'd in from the side. He's gonna go ahead and lock down Braum. And they're most likely gonna turn this into a mid push. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a strategy known in League of Legends as the Death Ball. You just witnessed it here. Where you're literally running them down and there's nothing they can do. Anyways, that's a free Baron for a Lyrion Gaming due to the misplays of Bug. Oh, <laughs> Felkaz disappears. This Rengar is a menace and it looks like it's not going to be a free Baron. 
Vladimir and Rengar have something to say. They're going to go ahead and clean up this team fight. They're going to go ahead and go for that Baron. Team Fub with the clean ace. I'm speechless. I'm actually speechless. Almost as if... It's almost as if... Uh... Rar? Sorry. Again, my screen's really bad. Rar is his name? The jungler? Uh, Gasp, actually. That's Gasp? It. Sorry. Uh, it's almost as if Gasp heard me, said, No, shut the heck up, man. Shut up. L <laughs> let me take care of this. Alright, sit down. And then he came up and just said, No. That's not and your so, Baron. That's my Baron. I'm taking it. I'm going home. Right, and so... In, in my ELO, that's what we call a silver play. That most likely... Both teams are kind of just sitting there like, oh, why did we go for that? Like, that could have gone wrong in so many ways for both teams. Unfortunately, Erlarion Gaming, their luck ran a little bit short with the Rengar coming back. And Team Fub are just going to push this Baron power play as hard as they possibly can. Just cleaning up their top side of the jungle. They're prepping for that top push. Velkaz is going to try to do whatever he can. Urgot getting chunked out, even with all the defenses to his advantage. Vladimir going for the kill. He's going to have to walk away from that as Jin just walks menacingly at him with that fourth shot ready. I love playing Jin. Yeah, that fourth shot. You just feel so powerful. You feel like you could destroy empires with that fourth shot. Yeah, that fourth shot is... For an auto attack champion, Jin's fourth shot has to be one of the most sad. Oh, and oh. Rengar, he just says no one's allowed to play while I'm on the map. It's most likely he's not going to be able to play this champion for the rest of the series. He's just been. Rengar says monster. I don't need no fourth shot. I just have my. I just have Q. Right. I just press Q and they die. Hmm. And Team Alarion Gaming is just going to try to clear out this vision on the top side of their map. Oh, and we have a pause unknown. Strategic pause? Strategic pause? Hopefully not a strategic pause. Let's see if we can... Oh, Rengar's game froze. Unfortunate, the client just needs a little bit more work. You know, indie, indie company, indie company. All good Wait, names. Please. <laughs> I can't see the game. Rengar can't see the game. <laughs> And we're back into it as Team Fub pushes down bot lane. They've bounced from every single lane. They're going to try to clean up all these inner towers. See if they can push this Baron buff to its limits as Jin clears out the wave so he can join his team bot lane. And it looks like they're going to go ahead and give up that up. Oh. And, and they're going to give up the Ivern too. Ivern just disappears. No one. This poor, poor Rengar. He only has 13 kills. It's actually, oh my. Oh, the, the, the damage coming out of the Rengar is disgusting. And it, it looks <laughs> like... This Bob is runs through the game. It looks like this is gonna be the final play. This is gonna be the final push of game one. What a how do I what's a word that sums up this game? Uh, Topsy turvy, if you would ask me. <laughs> Both teams going back and forth. This was a slugger, 27 to 17, 13k gold lead. Congratulations, to Bob. I thought this was game. supposed to be a diamond game. There's so many kills. I mean, diamonds like to fight a lot too. Don't don't think that they're not gonna tussle it out if they feel like their opponents can match it. And with with that game, I want to posit you to back to champ select a little bit. The Ivern pick obviously did not pan out as well as Alarion Gaming were hoping to you know, make use of. It definitely was able to get them quite a few picks, but with Ivern's W giving Rengar just so much extra mobility in team fights, I feel like unless they're going to ban away the Rengar, Ivern should not be a pick that they pick into this comp. I think Rengar was the um was the counter pick to Ivern, which honestly is really smart from uh from Team Fug. Right. 
and going over these uh in-game stats, right? This this I can't posit enough how much of a monster this Rengar was. 33k damage. The closest person on either side was Ezreal with 26. I mean, this guy was just doing everything he could to get his team ahead, and it shows. 14-1-7, 33k damage. damage. Every, every per- perceivable advantage that he could get to his team, he could. Like, even his vision score is top-notch for a jungler. 44. Yes, almost yes, matching MVP for this game. Almost matching his support at 49. I mean, the guy is clearly the star for this game. He's going to be my take he's, notes. He's, <laughs> he's going to be my most valuable player for this game. Uh there's not much more we can say. I honestly liked how bot lane played it out. Uh definitely Artir Artelier and Degron can most likely walk away with their heads high. That Velkaz no you to everyone at any chance. Uh, for Team Fub, their bot lane, I, I feel like if Alarion is going to go for the more poke-heavy supports, I'm of the proponent that you either want to go for something that can sustain or something that can match. You never want to go tank versus poke because tank is obviously going to lose out early on unless something comes along to sort of throw that whole dynamic out of whack. And with Ezreal, Ezreal's already safe enough. He doesn't need Braum necessarily to sort of stop the Jin ult, if that makes sense. So it would be more effective for their team if they were going to go for this to have Diomar on something that can duel with the Urgot and have a frontline presence. And for Pabu to go something like, you know, I want to say Janna or Soraka, something that can match Ezreal's safety and sort of keep his team alive just a little bit more. Also, something that he also can be safe on, because there was quite a few times where he was caught out, and it just kind of felt like he was sort of trying to get that vision down, but he just had no safety net himself, if that makes sense. What they wanted to do bot lane was um, they wanted the Ezreal to uh, basically... The Ezreal Braum to basically overpower the... uh, the enemy team with aggression. Once they hit that spike, uh, they went full aggression and just got the stuns and got, and got killed. Because there's not much that Jin and Velkaz can do if you just run them down. Right. Uh, un- like, dodge their skill shots and there's not much they can do. Right. Uh, well, there's not so much what- more that we can talk about for this game one. Other than, and I I, I want to posit this. So the mid game was definitely topsy turvy with Team Fub obviously taking a very significant lead and running with it. But it was clear to see that Alarion Gaming sort of had a idea of how to come back into that game. Unfortunately, that Rengar was too much of a sort of obstacle to overcome. Would you like to see Alarion Gaming run this back? either with the Rengar gone or with a better game plan coming into game two? I want to see a better game plan coming from Illyrion. The Jin pick, the Velkaz pick, was, that was pretty good. Uh, but I want them to actually play their game. The The Anivia didn't really stall at the game like you like we wanted it to. Right. So what ended up happening was they would just wave clear it out. So maybe next game, either pick a Sivir instead of a gin, so that way you can stall out the game like you want to. Uh, but you, they need to commit to a game plan. Uh, this one was a little a little more varied. And while I do like that, it didn't really work out for them. So either get some defensive options for this team comp, uh, or get a new game plan. Got you. And with that, that's going to be... Us for game one, we're going to throw it to a quick intermission, and when we come back, we'll come back with game two of Team Fub versus Alarion Gaming.